am I glad to be before you today? Today's show um, will be a wonderful show. And don't forget, it's still the debate show with Apostle Emmanuel Letton. And today we'll be dealing with a very interesting topic. I'm sure you're going to find it very enlightening, educative, uh, inspirational, and above all, imparting. The topic of today's discussion is on a conversation around the debate. And the debate is, who is the Christian God? Um, those who believe in Allah are saying that the Christians believe in Jesus as a deity is heresy. Now the Christian Bible, if we take it that Jesus is the Son of God and it looks like there's no need for prophets, but once we realize that he was a prophet of God, then oh, who was the last prophet? Where does it say he was the last prophet? The Judaic believers are also saying that the Christians believe in Jesus Christ as the Son of God. He is heretic. I would say that uh, Judaism has three fundamental issues with Christian theology. Uh, issue number one, which does not go to the messianic aspect of Jesus, but to the divinity and the trinity and the uh, Holy uh, Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost, our problem would be that we believe that God uh, has never and will never assume a, a human form. And once you deal with the, uh, the reification or the corporalization of the deity, you are violating a tenet of God to being infinite and non-material. Now that, that of course goes to the divinity and that was a later development in Christianity. Are they correct? And if they aren't correct, who is the Christian God? We will go into these details and discussions in a bit. We'll be right back. We are back. Now, the topic, who is the Christian God? I want to start this um, conversation with you today by introducing you first to the concept of God. Briefly, you know, what is the concept of God and where did he originate from? And why are we even having this conversation about a God? Because there is a different school of thought that argues that there is no God. We are each free to believe what we want. And it's my view that the simplest explanation is, there is no God. No one created the universe, and no one directs our fate. This leads me to a profound realization. There is probably no heaven, and no afterlife either. So, first of all, um, it's important to know that the concept of God is a belief um, in the existence of a deity, um, a one who is supposed to have supernatural powers, or a one who is responsible for the design and creation of the world, and the universe, and the earth, and men, and, and animals, or the belief in an infinite intelligence. Um, there are about 4,200 religions in the world, and in one way or the other, they all believe in the existence of a God, a supreme, or maybe not yet supreme, before I go to the issue of being supreme, to the existence of a supernatural being. Um, some of them express this belief um, in worship of different... Um, names of supreme beings or deities and they have, uh, you know and they have done so around the world from ages to ages uh, when i went to japan some years ago a couple of times as well i know that the japanese people ethnically um you know whether organized religion or not um do identify with the belief in god with a system called, or religious belief system called Shinto. And this is a belief in, you know, gods. Um, in ancient Egypt, we see very much in archeological, fact, you know, um, research that there was a very prominent uh, practice and belief in the existence of gods. We see in China, in the Ruism and Taoism of China's belief, religious belief system that they had a belief or they have a belief in a religious belief system 
you know, that recognize the existence of gods. We see in India, which is some people say is the is the um, birthplace of so many other Asiatic religious belief system or god systems, um, the Hindus, the Buddhists, the Jainisms, and the those who practice Kisism, they all believe in the existence of God. You know, elsewhere in the pagan world, in the belief of ancestors, you know, in somewhere in West Africa, they call them the Shongo, Eledumare, and, and it, the names go on and on around the world. There is always a belief in some kind of God, whether it is, it is Thor or is Zeus, you want to call them. There is, in Greek mythology, there is always this concept of belief in a God. But where did it originate from? Um, when you study the, the Bible, as we have it, from the book of Genesis, you discover that Adam introduces us to the existence of God, um, based on the story of him being created, formed and created and placed in the Garden of Eden with the woman called he called Eve. Later on in Genesis chapter 4, uh, from verse 1 and down, you will find also that there was a, con a consciousness of the existence of, of a God. However, when did it move, if we follow biblical account, um, when did it move from the belief in God, whose name at the time was not known, whether it was Jehovah, whether it was Elohim, um, when did that move to these many names and these many gods and these many variations? And that's an important you know, question to keep in the parking lot. But it's also also important for us to know by what names were were these god systems established. So uh, one of the things we know is that when we read of God used in any writings, for that uh, identity or that entity called God would be um, the word El, E L, as you will see on your screens, is the word E L. And that will use for a name like El Ohim. Um, that will be used for a name like El Shaddai. And so, when you read the Bible, you find God appearing to Moses, and He said to Moses, "By my name, um, Jehovah, was I not known to your father Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, but I was known to them as the Almighty, which is El Shaddai, which is Adonai, which is El Ohim." In Arabic um, uh, 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 language, the word God now would mean the word Ilya, you know, um, Ilha. And Ilha means a God, you know. Uh, and across the world, they had a name for all kinds of gods. You have the Hare Krishna God, you have uh, various names, and you can see them on your screens, different names that different, um, you know, different uh, religious belief systems have given to a God. Uh, and so, therefore, God itself as a concept, you know, can become a traditional expression or, per se, just a name. Now, it's important for you then to note that in ancient Egypt, the sun god was seen as the supreme god. He was the, all, the god of all the gods. Yeah, he was the god who had all the powers. However, he was not called the um, Elohim, for example, um, the sun god. So even though in Egypt the sun god was seen to be as the bigger god, they had a recognition of a much more higher god. I'll show you that when you look at the book of Exodus. In Exodus, you'll find here that, um, let me read it to you. Uh, clearly. When Moses had the experience with Pharaoh, uh, you'll find that in, in Exodus chapter 8 verse 19, um, that it says that after one of the certain number of the plagues, the magicians of Pharaoh had said to Pharaoh in verse 19, said, then the magicians of Pharaoh said to Pharaoh, this is the finger of God. And there the God here means Elohim. But Pharaoh's heart was hardened, and he did not listen to them, as Jehovah had said. So Jehovah here is the recognition um, in the author that for the Hebrew, 
Jehovah himself here is not the same as a God. Jehovah for, 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 the, for the Hebrew here, a revelation of God to Moses is the, you know, the powerful God. Yeah? And that's why it's, as you can see there, God appeared to, 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 to Moses in chapter 3, verse, I think from verse 1, it says, um, By my name, Jehovah, was I not known to your, to your fathers? And then he said to him in chapter 3, verse 1, I am the God of your father, Abraham. I am the God of your father, Isaac. I am the God of your father, Jacob. So we see here the clarity, the distinction between a God and the emerging concept of the God. And this is not just in, in Judaism, um, you know, being the, 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 the religious belief system of the Hebrew man or the Jewish man. Even in, in, in Islam, they, they believe in Allah. And this, this belief in Allah is not just an Islamic thing, it's an Arabic word for the belief in the Abrahamic monotheistic God, meaning the one God. And within the Islam religion, is, is the, this belief system is contained within a, 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 hadith, a hadith, I think they call it a hadith, called um, the Taweed. And the Taweed is the belief in the oneness of God. What do I mean by the oneness of God? Which this is to say, um, there are no other gods besides God. He is the one God, and He is God alone. This, the 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 Jewish, you know, religious system believes and accepts that He is the one God, and He is alone. If you look at the book of Isaiah, you know, chapter forty-three, verse eleven. You look at Isaiah chapter forty-five, verse five. Isaiah chapter forty-six, verse nine. You look at Deuteronomy chapter 5, verse 7 to 9. You look at Exodus chapter 20 from verse 3 to 5. All of these and many others. I, you know, captures God, identifies and says, I, even I, I am the Lord. Besides me, there is no Savior. I, the Lord our God, He is but one God and there is no other besides Him. So both the, um, you know, the um, Islamic religious belief system and the Jewish belief system recognized the, you know, the uniqueness and the oneness of the Almighty God. Now, now that we are here at this point, what does the New Testament of, of, of the Scriptures tell us about this concept of the one God? The, you know, the Bible tells us in John chapter 17 verse 3, and I want to read it to you, you know, that Jesus himself... Um, as he spoke and prayed for the disciples, he said, he said something very interesting. I'm going to read to you. Um, let me read to you from verse, verse, um, verse 3. He says, And this is eternal life, that they might know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. Now, this is a very clear distinction that Jesus is saying here that he has come to present to them eternal life. And what is eternal life here? It's for them to know. The word know there is a Greek word which, which means to have an experience of God. We'll be right back. And we are back. Well, before we enter the break, I was explaining to you, you know, what Jesus said in John 17 verse 3 and how he said, that I have come to give eternal life, as many as you've given unto me, that as many as receive eternal life. And then he defined what he meant by eternal life in verse 3. He said that they may know you as the only true God. The word only is a Greek word there meaning genosko. And that is, you know, having a personal, having um, a personal experiential knowledge of God. Having a personal experiential knowledge of God which is not what you read just about what you read or what somebody told you or what somebody presented to you but what you have come to know a relationship which comes by a relationship itself so you cannot just say God is who God is because of what was written or God is who God is because of what was revealed to prophet Abraham or to prophet Moses you are now able to say God is God because of who he is to me 
God is God because of the revelation of God I have in my spirit. God is God because I have come to know him as my father. I've come to know him as my Lord. I've come to know him as my friend. So that takes us to the next part of the conversation where we establish, or I establish to you who the Christian God is. While everybody else seems to tell us that, you know, God is um, the supreme deity, God is this, God is that, God is the energy force, the Christian God is all of that encompassed and more. For example, when you read the book of Colossians chapter 1 verse 19, the Bible says that he pleases the Father, that in Jesus Christ, in Jesus Christ, should the fullness of the Godhead dwell bodily. What is he saying? That everything you've thought about God, you thought God is Elohim, you say he is Jehovah, you say he's Adonai, you say he's El Shaddai, you say he's, um, he's, uh, he's, um, He's Allah. Whatever you've called him, whatever you thought you knew him to be, he says now, all of that, all of that revelation of God, all of that dispensational revelation of God, whether it came before or came after, is now embodied, bodily represented in one person who is called Jesus. Why? Because there is no other name that is given under heaven by which a man must be saved except the name of Jesus. Jesus said, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. In John chapter 14, he says, no one cometh unto the Father except or bought by me. You know, there was an interesting time. Um, the Bible tells in John 14, where Philip asked him, when he talked about the Father, he said, you know, I and the Father are one. The Father is in me, I am the Father, and we are one. When you've seen me, you've seen the Father. He said, henceforth, you have known the Father. And then Philip said, you know, Master, why don't you just show us the Father? And we will be satisfied. We'll be okay. It will be done for us. And Jesus said, oh, Philip, I mean, how long do I have to be with you for you to recognize me? Don't you believe when I say I am in the Father and that the Father is in me? I mean, look at that conversation. It moves from talking about this Father who is in heaven and this Father who does all the work to saying he is the Father as well. So who is the Christian God? I think the first answer to your question is, the Christian God is the one who died on the cross of Calvary for the sins of the whole world. The Christian God is the one that John chapter 3 from verse 16 says, For he so loved the world that he gave himself as the Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And now somebody says, but then he called himself the Son. If Jesus is, is the is you know, if Jesus is the God, why is he also calling himself the Son? Yes, he is calling himself the Son because he is the Father. When he became flesh, he became the Son. So God the Son is literally God in flesh. That's what it means. And God in flesh, his name is Jesus. And he has sent into heaven bodily. And dwells in heaven now and has assumed the full authority of the Godhead. You know, when you read John 14 and you go to John 15 and John 16, you'll find where Jesus said, The Spirit of Truth will come. When He comes, He will not answer to His own name, but He will answer to my name. He will take of me and give to you. He said, All the Father has is mine, and all I have, He will take and give to you. Do you understand what I'm trying to talk to you about today? That the Christian God is the one who loves you. The one who died for you. The one who was born by the Virgin Mary, the one who suffered under Pontius Pilate, the one who was crucified, the one who died and he was buried, the one who descended into hell, and then on the third day he rose bodily from the dead. He came out of that tomb, the stones were rolled away and he walked out bodily, physically. The one who ate, he ate fish. When the apostles you know, when Peter and John were fishing, 
He called out to them and said, hey guys, what are you doing? And Peter said, we've been fishing all night, we've caught nothing. And he said, why don't you throw the net to the other side? And John heard in those voices, said, ah, oh, Peter, it's the master. Because when they threw the net in and they brought it out, it almost broke for the net had caught so much fish. And Peter jumped into the water and swam himself to shore. And John paddled over and, 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 and met them. And when they got there, Jesus himself had made a fire. He had fish on it already. And he said to Peter, guys, bring what you caught. Add to eat. Let's eat together. He ate. When Thomas met him in that closed room, and Thomas looked at him, he said, Thomas, come. Because Thomas didn't believe that he had risen from the dead. He said, he said to his, his colleagues, he said, until I put my hand on the side, I will not believe. Because Thomas was there. Thomas saw what happened to him. And the Bible tells us that when he said to Thomas, come, put your hand on my side. And Thomas did. And Thomas felt the freshness of that skin and could still feel the heat of the body. The Bible says he looked at the hands and saw the holes and the freshness of that hand. He fell on his knees and he screamed. He said, my Lord and my God. He called him Elohim, my Lord, Jehovah, my Jehovah and my Elohim. This is what he said. He called them both names, which means suddenly Thomas realizes this is the same God that appeared to Moses in the burning bush. This is the same God that appeared to Abraham. Oh, I feel the anointing even right now. I feel that anointing of the Holy Spirit even strong right now. He said this is the same God, the God who rose from the dead. The God that calls himself Jesus as well. Who is the God of the Christians? The God of the Christians is the one who said, If you believe in me, I will give you power to become sons of God. If you believe in me, I who is, who was, and who is to come. I who was dead, but now I am alive. I who I am the Alpha, I am the Omega, I am the beginning, I am the ending. I who is the first and I am the last. He said, if you believe, I will give you the power to become partakers of the God kind. This is the God of the Christians. The Christian's God is not a faraway threatening God who wants to destroy all of the world. Because he doesn't want to destroy the world, he forgave the world. The Christian God is not the one who is waiting to destroy humanity for every whit of mistake that he makes or she makes. No, the Christian God is the one who says, I recognize that the heart of men are desperately wicked from the days of her youth. But guess what? I have died on the cross of Calvary. I have shed my blood on the Calvary tree. I have washed away your sins. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, I shall give you rest. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Who is the Christian God? I love him so much. His name is Jesus. Will you believe in him today? He will make himself known to you. God bless you. God bless you.